I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the chord gun or the MIDI chord gun in Reaper. Now the chord gun or the MIDI chord gun is a script created by the user Pandabot on the Reaper forum. Basically, it allows us to create MIDI chords, especially complicated chords, very easily and very quickly in Reaper. It's a free script, but he will accept donations right here. Now, because it doesn't come with Reaper, we do need to install it first. So go to your browser and search Reaper Stash. Click this link and then search Chord Gun. This file should show up. Click it and then download the script. Then go back to Reaper and go to the Options menu and go down here and choose Show Reaper Resource Path. Then find the Scripts folder, open it, and then find the file we just downloaded and put it in the Scripts folder. Then we can go back to Reaper, go to the Actions menu, Show Action List, then go to New Action, Load Rea Script. Then find that file and double click it to load it into Reaper. Then find it in here and double click it to run it. And it should open a window that looks like this. This is the chord gun or the MIDI chord gun. I'm going to make it a bit bigger, then right click it and dock it so we could see it in the upper right corner over here. Now we could see the script and the arrangement window at the same time. So I created a project over here with a piano pad and a few drum sounds. Now it's important for this that we set up the MIDI input using the virtual MIDI keyboard. This is how the script communicates with our MIDI tracks. Or we could just choose all MIDI inputs, all channels. So now we should create a MIDI item to place our chords into. Hold on Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and just draw in a MIDI item. Then we should double click it to open it because we need to see what chords we're placing in this item. So the way this works is we can just click these chords over here to hear them or shift click them to place them in our MIDI item. Right up here, we choose the scale or the key, C, D, whatever key we want. And the scale we can choose right here. Major, minor, pentatonic. And we can see the resulting notes from that scale right over here. So if we choose pentatonic, these are the notes in that scale. Let's put it back to major. So like I said, if we just click on any of these chords, we're going to hear them or audition them. Now we should know some keyboard shortcuts. The zero key will turn off the note that we're hearing, which is kind of helpful for this script because it plays the note indefinitely like this. Here's a C chord. And it keeps playing until we hit the zero key. And the numbers up here show which chord is chosen in that scale. So in a C scale, the second note is a D, the third note is an E, and so on. And we could use those numbers to hear each chord instead of clicking them. So if I hit one, we hear the C chord. Hit three, we hear the E chord. And in this key, it's an E minor. So this is really helpful for making sure our chords are in the key of our song with alternate chords as well. These are the typical ones we'd use in this key, but there's alternate ones down here, making it a lot easier to try different chords for our progressions. But let's keep it simple and create a chord progression in the key of C major. We'll first choose the type of notes we want by changing the grid. Let's change it to whole notes, and now it's going to record or place whole notes 
if we shift click these buttons, we'll hold shift and hit the number that we've chosen over here. So if we shift click the C, it puts that C major chord right here. And then it moves the cursor over, ready to place the next chord in the progression. So let's choose a G, but this time we'll hold down shift and five, because the five chord in the progression. Shift five, and that places that chord over here. Then let's add an A minor, shift click, and finally an F major. Shift click or shift four. And just like that, we created a chord progression in this MIDI item. Let's hear it back. Sounds pretty good. Now, if we wanted to change the octave of our chords, we could change that up here. But we could also change the inversion over here. For example, this C chord is a bit low compared to the others. So if we want to change that inversion to be a bit higher, just put our cursor right at the beginning and swap it out with a different inversion. We could hear it just by clicking this. And we could also see the inversion by looking over here. Let's try this one instead. Shift click, and replace that chord in this section with that inversion of the C major. So it sounds like this. I think that's a bit better. Now we could also swap out our chords just by selecting them. Marquee select these notes, and just shift click any change we want. For example, let's change the second chord. Instead of being a G, let's make it an E minor. Shift click, and it replaced that chord right here. And because it's still selected, we could swap it out until we're happy with that chord. Let's try an E minor 7 instead. And that changes that chord on the fly. And we could swap each chord out that easily. Let's change the third chord to be an F. Let's change this one to be an F minor. And that sounds like this. So just like that, we could swap out one chord at a time, just by selecting those notes and shift clicking the different chord variations. Let's try a different rhythm. Let's change this to be quarter notes. Let's change the progression to start on the A minor, shift click, but we'll do that four times to create four quarter notes in a row. Then we'll switch it to the F four times, then the C, then the G. And that adds some rhythm to the part. And we can shorten the notes by selecting them all, trim them, or holding shift. Or duplicate them like this. We'll just play on the upbeats.
we can still swap out our chords, even if they're playing a different rhythm. Let's change this to an E minor. Or an E major. Or an E major 7. So it's very easily to swap out our simple chords for something more complicated. And we can also play a rhythm with our MIDI keyboard and transfer that to chords, like this. Let's go into a chord and play a MIDI rhythm. Now we can keep this rhythm, but just change it to a chord progression. Let's select these three, make it a C major, select these three, make it an E minor, change these to an F, and these to a G. So you can create your own rhythms, but still use these chords and swap them out for more interesting chords this easily. Let's change the F to be an F sus2 and the G to be a G sus4. So just like that, we could play around with different voicings or more interesting chords in our progressions. And we could also perform our chords using the script. Let's delete this all again, go into record, and just play the chords we want. And that records the part as chords. And we could also record the chords just by hitting shift and the numbers. Let's make a chord progression using our C, our D minor, our E minor, an F sus 2, and a G sus 4. And now if we use the numbers up here, we could trigger those chords in real time. Let's delete all this, and we'll perform shift one, shift two, shift three, shift four, and shift five. And just like that, we performed those chord changes based on the chords we selected. But let's shorten the notes a bit. So that's pretty much it. That's the chord gun or the MIDI chord gun in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.